Hello everyone. Uh, I want to take just a couple moments of your day here and describe to you a situation at Holy Cross uh, and why the services that you're going to see in the next two weeks, our Sunday morning live streams, why those services will look different uh, than what we've been doing for the past year. The reason why it's going to look different is because those services are going to be led from the house here um, and not from the church itself. And the reason for that is because um, I am in quarantine as long, along with some other people at the church. I wrote about this in a little blurb that will go along with the bulletin today. So you're going to receive a little bit of a write-up about that. Uh, but I want to just take a moment and explain exactly what happened. And the situation is this. Someone, and for obvious reasons, they wish to remain anonymous. Someone who helped out with our Easter morning live stream. And, and who had no symptoms whatsoever. Later on, started feeling a little ill. And so did what they needed to do. They self-isolated and they booked a test. Uh, they got their test on Monday morning, and then early Tuesday morning, they got the results, and unfortunately, the results came back positive for COVID-19. Um, not a variant, but COVID-19. I wanna be clear. No one at that service who helped out on Sunday morning live stream, no one, had any symptoms. Nobody felt ill. Nobody had any indication that there was uh, an exposure or a potential exposure to COVID-19. So nobody who was present for that Easter morning live stream, nobody did anything wrong. Now, when somebody tests positive for COVID-19, there are certain policies and procedures that need to be followed. And one of the main ones is they need to be uh, in touch with everybody who is labeled a close contact. Now, a close contact is defined as anybody that they have had um, been in, in close proximity, less than two meters, for a cumulative time of 15 minutes within the prior 48 hours from the onset of symptoms and the test. Now, what that means is, unfortunately, uh, because they began to feel some symptoms later on uh, in Sunday evening and, and because they got the test on Monday morning, Sunday morning, our Easter live stream, sits within that pocket of 48 hours. And because of our service, and um, there's just no way to say who was within those two meters and who was not within those two meters. Uh, and so everybody who helped out with that live stream is technically a close contact. Uh, we have been in close contact with someone who subsequently tested positive for COVID-19. Now, when you're labeled a close contact, what that means is that you yourself need to isolate, you need to quarantine for 14 days, and you need to be tested. And so that's what we're doing. You know, that involves myself, it involves Larry, it involves Doug, it involves our whole, almost our whole live stream team, it involves members of the choir, the, the, the hand belt, you know, like, so there's just, it was Easter morning and we just had a little bit more people involved in the service. Now, um, out of the 13 people who needed to be tested, um, as of this date, I've heard from 11 of them. And 11 and the, of those that I have heard of, um, we've all come back negative. So to be clear, while those of us who helped out with the Easter morning live stream, while we are labeled close contacts, there has not been an outbreak at Holy Cross. Nobody got infected at Holy Cross. Holy Cross remains a safe place. And I think that's important to remember. Uh, now we're still gonna be doing our services. Uh, Wednesday morning prayer will just be done with myself at the house. 
Um, and we're still going to be live streaming on Sunday mornings. It's going to look a little bit more like a Zoom call because that's how we're going to live stream. But Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, we're still going to be live streaming our services. And we hope that you will connect that way. So that's the situation. And again, I want to um, just reiterate that every single person who was at that live stream felt fine. No one had any symptoms of, of COVID-19 or any other illness. Everybody felt fine. So there was no indication that anybody should not have come to the service. Nobody did anything wrong. Now, why am I hammering on that point? I'm hammering that out and I'm really wanting to make that clear because there is a danger for us and the danger is to respond in fear and judgment. Now, I get it. This is a scary time in our lives. Uh, and, you know, it's been a long time as we've just journeyed through the pandemic for over a year. And we're all feeling a little weary. And believe me, I understand. But the danger is to subtly or maybe not so subtly suggest that somebody did something wrong in, con in, in getting COVID-19, like it's their fault, um, or they should have known. And so we begin to vilify the person who contacted COVID-19, or we begin to judge them, um, or we begin to kind of separate ourselves from them. We, just, we decide, well, they're not somebody I'm going to go get close to, as if they are somehow... Uh, dirty or unclean. Um, we can't respond that way. We can't respond in fear. We can't respond in judgment. We need to respond in grace. This is a difficult situation. Um, but everybody is acting appropriately. From the person who initially contacted COVID-19 and who took the steps that they needed to take to let people know, uh, to isolate themselves, um, and to minimize any sort of exposure. From everybody at that service who is uh, gracefully quarantining themselves um, and have gotten the test and, and all that. Everybody is doing what they need to do. I would ask that you respond in grace. I would ask that you respond uh, in prayer. And, and I would ask how you would feel if you were in this person's shoes. If you had, for no fault of your own, contracted COVID-19 and then all of a sudden heard people suggest that somehow you did something wrong or that you should be avoided or that um, you were somehow unclean. We can't act like that. And so I would ask your prayers. Please pray for everybody who was involved with that uh, live stream. Pray for our, uh, for our patients as we go through uh, this quarantine. But more specifically, pray for the person uh, who contracted COVID-19. Um, after that service. Um, pray grace upon them. Pray that they feel the love of their Christian community that upholds them. Uh, pray that they feel the spirit of Jesus with them um, and that they feel upheld by the Christian community. So if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. I'm available by email. I'm available by phone. Obviously not available for a visit, uh, but, uh, but I am around and I am working. And so if you do have any questions, um, please contact me. But again, please just know um, that the church and the church sanctuary, it is still a safe place. It is still a clean place. It is still a place that you can feel confident going to when the time comes that we come back to in-person services. 
Um, I look forward to hearing from you and I look forward to connecting with you on Sunday morning um, with our live stream worship. God bless you all.